So we'll start with the objectives of the talk today. Uh, by the end of this presentation, you will be able to describe the impact of technology on assessment, outline some clinical assessment methods, list the benefits of use of technology in a clinical assessment, list the steps of driving cultural shift in using technology, and lastly, describe some technology acceptance models. So uh, the talk will be uh, in two major lines. The first one will focus on the importance and benefits of technology in a clinical assessment. And the second one is how to overcome technology resistance. <coughs> so I think uh, Dr. Hassanein has uh, spoken uh, enough on Miller's uh, present, so I will skip that uh, slide. Uh, uh, clinical skills assessment, um, as Mila uh, present shows, that we need multiple uh, ways of a clinical assessment because of the complexity of the assessment itself, because of the uh, multitude of factors uh, affecting the, measure, uh, the outcome of the, of the assessment method. So when you introduce a new methodology for assessing clinical assessment, you need to uh, raise uh, certain questions and issues to evaluate that teaching met uh, that assessment method. Uh, these include, uh, is the test reliable or not? Is it valid or not? How do we do the blueprinting? How do we set the standard for uh, the pass mark? Uh, what's the purpose of the test? Is it uh, a summative test? or is it a, a, a formative test, and uh, what is the cost? There are m multiple ways of assessing uh, the clinical performance, and uh, every method trying to assess the performance from a different perspective. So there are multiple lenses focused on the student, different angles to assess the performance of the uh, student. And each uh, per performance uh, measure uh, 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 um, trying to elicit the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, achievement of the, uh, the extent of the achievement of the, of the uh, student. So I'm not going to go through these, but the application of the, uh, myth, uh, the uh, issues which I uh, spoke uh, about them before, has led to the almost elimination of some of these uh, assessment uh, methods, such as the uh, uh, long cases and uh, short cases. While others are still uh, uh, in, in bulk, such as the uh, objective structure to clinical examination. Now, so what are the benefits of automating a clinical skills assessment? It helps in the initial preparation of the exam, of the organization, administration, correction, distribution, and analysis. Automation of a clinical assessment can replace part of the human uh, effort. It frees up time of the staff so can, the staff can do uh, other jobs, whether administrative jobs or research or the clinical work. It increases the reliability through standardization, increases validity, reduces the error, and increases the cost efficiency and helps in curriculum mapping and makes the analysis easier. Now I will go to talk about some of these in more uh, detail. What's reliability? Reliability means that the test is consistent during frequent administration, multiple administrations. And if the test is consistent, it means that it is fair to the student. So this is a very important issue to, to, to consider. Okay. Uh, 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 tests such, such as the OSCEs, um, use of simulators, they have been introduced for that purpose, to standardize the tests and to make the test more objective and more structured so they will be more reliable. Now, the more complex a task is, the higher the chance of committing an error. Uh, clinical skills assessment is a complex task. 
And there are a lot of factors affecting the performance outcome. For example, the examiner behavior, the student behavior, the gender, the mood, uh, the interaction between the student and this, the examiner, okay, the setup of the exam itself. So there are a lot of factors which affect the, uh, the, uh, the outcome and the measurement. So it would be good if we can uh, 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 devise a way to minimize the effect of those factors. And technology does help in that. So uh, um, Smith, for example, here, it show, he, he shows that in a simple task, when the task is simple, the chance of error will be one in 10,000. While a complex task will be one error in 10 times, 10 attempts. So in 10 attempts, you are more likely to commit an error. So why not to simplify the tasks of a clinical assessment by using technology? Um, technology helps in enhancing the cost effectiveness. OSCEs are very laborious, very costly. Yani, and see, uh, Kuzi Manu showed in one of the studies that in a six station OSCE, just six station OSCE for just 40 students, required 327 hours of staff time, which is equal to 13.6, 24 hour days, 24 hour days. So you can imagine how much time is spent in organizing the proper OSCE. OSCE, the work paper is a lot. Plus technology can help in solving that. So you can purchase the license and purchase the equipment once and use that equipment for years. And the cost for maintenance is minimal. While conducting cost keys in the, in the classical way is, is very uh, is a heavy work and it costs a lot of money. And uh, Krobman uh, shows that uh, automation of cost reduced the cost and the workload by around 70%, which is a lot. Okay. Uh, automation and technology helps in curriculum mapping. Curriculum map is a visual representation of the main elements of the curriculum and the links between them. And curriculum map is used by students, by the teachers, by accrediting bodies, educational researchers, other stakeholders. So it does help a lot. This, this is a curriculum map um, uh, uh, reported by Harden in 2001. And it shows, from the student perspective, uh, shows uh, 10 windows. Uh, for example, the student at the center of the map here. This is the assessment. How do we do assessment? Certainly the OSCE exam, okay? So stations, the written exam, questions, portfolios, uh, components, and so on. For example, other, see the content, the learning outcomes, other windows, learning opportunities, where do students learn, learning locations, learning resources, time to, so in, in this way, to, through this visual representation, you can see the curriculum as a whole and the, the, the ways and the places to implement the curriculum and so you can track uh, uh, every component of the curriculum. The other benefit is ease of analysis, particularly in the OSCEs when you use a global uh, evaluation of the students. Okay. So you want to translate that global evaluation into figures, into numbers. And you decide on the pass mark of, this, uh, of this, the student. Technology does help in that and make it uh, uh, easier. In addition, technology helps in the digital, digital recording of data. So that leads to uh, uh, the improvement, uh, leads to virtual hosting of assessment content. Data will be easily retrievable, can get it at any time, could be forever. The data can be anonymized, okay? The marking is easier. Giving feedback to the student can be given on an individual basis or in groups, 
and can be given immediately after the exam. Now I will move to the second part of my talk, which is the overcoming the resistance of technology, and this is the complex part of the talk. Uh, this graph shows, when see the idea, we always complain of difficulty of changing people. Okay? So when you introduce something, an idea, or a concept, or um, equipment, new equipment, okay, you will be resisted. That's uh, normal. Okay. Now, but in any in community of size of, of good size, like a medical school, for example, you can uh, the the type of people is divided into categories. Around 2.5 percent of them are innovators. Are what? Innovators, innovators yeah. pioneers, mm -hmm. trail uh, players. Okay. Thirteen point five percent of them are early adapters. Mm -hmm. They adapt your idea. Come. Okay. Okay. And thirty-four percent, the next group to them. Okay. The total will be fifty percent. If the innovators start, convince the early adapters. And the 16% converts the 34% you reach to the 50%. And this is the takeoff point. You are on the safe side. Okay? We keep this concept in mind when we'll change that you look forward who are the pioneers in your place and who are the early adapters, because these are the most important ones. Okay. Now, when you introduce technology, um, uh, you will be resisted to that, okay? Researchers have devised technology acceptance models. Technology acceptance models. Mm -hmm. This is the first one by Davis, 1993. I want to simplify it, okay? If to use, to use something, you need to have the intention to use it. Without intention, you're not going to use it. So the question, how do we convince you to develop that intention? This is the question. Okay. So this model shows that two main determinants of the intention to use. If you look at this one, this is the behavioral intention to use. And this is the actual use. Leave this one, the actual to use. This is our aim. That behavioral intention will be affected or moderated by two main moderators. Perceived usefulness, simply, is it useful for me or not? Is that idea useful for me or not? Or for the community, or for the purpose? And is it easy to adapt or to use or not? So if it was easy and it was useful, I'm more likely to, have to, de to develop the attitude and to develop the attention. So if you want your school to adopt technology, Make it easy and convince others to be, it, it's useful, as simple as that, okay? Of course, the, both of these factors are moderated or uh, by other external factors. We are not going to go into these. This model has updated, was updated by Vinkatesh in 2003 and added two more moderators. So the ease, uh, the, the usefulness, it's the same as the other one. Now just change the name and you know, so performed expectancy, effort expectancy. But he added two things, the social influence and the facilitated conditions. Social influence, it, yeah, it, it, it means that if I perceive people who are important to me, they think that I have to, you, you, to, to use that technology, then I'm most likely I'm going to use that technology. So the institution should convey to the people inside that they are willing or they like that the, uh, the, the staff adopt that technology. And here comes the role of, what, of the leadership. And the other one is the facility conditions. Facilitating conditions is not the infrastructure. I'm not talking about the infrastructure required for the technology. I'm talking here about 
the perception of the staff that there is an infrastructure which does help them in accepting the technology. يعني ممكن عندك الانفراستراكشر وفي المخازن وموجود وغير على كل ستاف they don't know ان هو مهم والله they would they would benefit from it and so on. So you need to, okay to tell your staff that you have the infrastructure and that infrastructure is what is useful. Okay. So that they develop the intention. Okay. These four major determinants. are affected by four modifiers. Age, the gender, experience, the staff, and voluntariness. And if you convince them, you can push them out, they Okay, okay, okay. Gender, the effect of gender depends on the culture, yeah, from, from place to place. Yeah, this we cannot, uh, different studies doesn't show uh, uh, a persistent pattern or constant pattern. Okay, age, younger people are more likely to change. Uh, experience, if you are more experienced, you are more likely to adopt a new technology. Why? Because already you have a lot of basic ideas to build on. Okay, so it's, okay. Now, this further was updated more. So the, uh, the, uh, the, the factors, the personal factors like age, like the gender, and the voluntariness and the experience have been grouped together into one factor, okay, which is the, the, the key relationship moderators, like individual factors. Then they add the technology anxiety and the adoption timeline. Let us skip this slide because I don't want to make it too more com complex. Now, when you use technology, there are certain questions. What are these questions? important questions? Some of them are focusing on the student, others focusing on the program itself as a whole. So example of questions in students. When is face-to-face -face instruction and assessment better than outline, than online, okay? When is virtual communication better? How does giving students feedback on their work via technology affect how well they think critically? So you need to raise the, such kind of uh, questions. And the same for the, for, for the program, for example. How does technology influence faculty overload? Does technology improve use of for class time? So you need to put those questions, all these questions before embarking on use of what, of any kind of technology. Now, let us assume we intend to use technology. Okay, so as a leadership item, so what to do? Mitch uh, Nine uh, Corporation is a virtual reality, let's uh, uh, say, guru. Okay, so they have these, published these tips of their experience. Five tips. The first one, and promote early adapters. 2.5% the early adapters. How? Because they allow staff to learn from colleagues, they show the staff benefits of emerging technologies. The second tip, address concerns with open dialogue. Why they don't accept technology? Why they are resisting? Help staff to recognize their hesitation. Create a support plan and schedule personal training. Personal training. The third step, Partner experienced users with the new users. Okay? So don't let an experience hold the stuff back. back. Okay. Introduce new technology mentors to help staff achieve their goals using the technology. The third step, invest in training. Schedule the training at accessible times. It's very important at accessible times. Okay? And this third, allow staff to easily submit queries and troubleshoot. And last recommendation is reinvest in training. Okay. So I'm going to take home message. Clinical assessment is complex and requires multiple measuring tools. 
The issues of validity, reliability, feasibility, and cost are universal, whatever the method of assessment. Automation of clinical assessment increases validity and reliability and decreases costs. Automation minimizes errors and ease analysis. Technology acceptance models help in studying the factors that determine the intention to use technology. Training and retraining is of paramount importance, and thank you. Thank you.